What's cracking everybody's in fellow Rose here bringing you some Pokemon Go Battle League content. In today's video, we're taking a look at Annihilate in the Great League and my strongest team for it. Now, I did go down to the 2300 ELO range because, as I always do every season, I tank after hitting Legends so that I can continue to make content that's got relevant teams for those of you who are actually trying to climb still because I still stand by that nobody cares what team I hit 3,200 ELO with because it may not be relevant to, you know, ELO for people who are still trying to hit Legends. So this team helped me get out of the 2,300 range and into the 2,400s in just a few sets, gain over 100 points with this team, and it's extremely strong and very consistent. Annihilate is just so good. Let's get into the battles and check out how this team performs. And keep in mind as well that, you know, we're in the 2,300 ELO range. And I don't think anybody who's ever been in there would ever argue that the teams down in that ELO range are just absolutely, you know, wild sometimes. So it's very inconsistent, and I'm hoping that this team will be just what you need to get out of that ELO range if you're stuck in it. And if you're out of it, or in another ELO range, it'll still be enough to get you up higher in the rankings. Not to say that there's anything wrong with this ELO range. I don't want to be, you know, taken not out of context there, but it's just, you know, that's a perception that not I'm not the one who came up with it. I'm just saying. So... Uh, Lickitung is the safe swap on this team. It's also an extremely good core mate to Annihilate and, and uh, Skarmory as well, being an extremely good core mate to Annihilate. So, uh, two very strong cores on this team. Lickitung is going to be mainly used to bait out a Steel type like Registeel, Bastiodon, or whatever that thing is that, you know, you don't want your Skarmory to see. <clears throat> now, um, thing is here is that I've seen a lot of more teams that are trying to counter Annihilate rather than seeing the Annihilates themselves. Now, I did see a few. Um, out of probably like the four sets I did with this team, I saw maybe two Annihilates, and this is one of them. And then the other sets that I did on the Saturday stream, um, I saw a few more. Now, speaking of streams, y'all need to come check out the stream 6 p.m. Eastern, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and on Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern. Um, tons of free memberships just got given out over the weekend by a beloved member of my Discord who just selflessly came in and started handing them out. Um, so check out the streams and you might you might be lucky enough to get one. And that's free access to my Discord server, which if you check the link in the description of the pinned comment, you can get access to early access to meta analysis teams like this one and other things. And you can catch me on Metify for coaching. But anyway, we're going to talk about this team a little bit more. Annihilate in the lead is just extremely strong. Lickitung's here as the safe swap for you to go into in a bad lead, right? This isn't necessarily going to be an instant pivot into Lickitung every time you get a weird lead or a, you know, a neutral lead like you would normally do with ABB teams, because this is not an ABB team. This is a more of a balanced team where all the Pokemon involved, <coughs> excuse me, don't really have any typings in common other than they just both core really well with Annihilate. Now, when it comes to Whiskash, I always go for that Shadow Ball and eat the first move because I know that there's going to be a Skarmory in the back and I want to keep my Skarmory loaded for whatever's in the back because typically there's going to be a Dragonair somewhere as well. Um, so I like to keep that in mind. So I'm using my Lickitung here to uh, to bait out that Skarmory. And if you know, the, the matchup's really not that bad, you're going to see in this matchup that the Skarmory actually gets pretty low when dealing with Lickitung. And my Lickitung's not the best IVs either, right? Perhaps if I had a bet, you know, better bulk on my Lickitung, maybe this would be a slightly different story. But for me, um, I just I'm going to just take the Sky Attack. My, my Lickitung hangs on with one HP, and I almost don't even notice it. But I go for that body slam. Gonna be able to take the lickets. Now, again, if I had like a few more HP, there's a very solid chance I could have licked that Skarmory down. Now, <coughs> as I was mentioning, my opponent comes in with a Dragonair, and I'm immediately going to pivot into my Skarmory. The opponent leaving their Whiskash low make, makes Skarmory's job easier. And that's the whole point of going for that Shadow Ball with Annihilate. Whether the opponent wants to call my bait or not, I'm either getting their shield or I'm getting the first um I'm getting I'm getting the first huge chunk of damage off their Pokemon. Now I'm going straight for Sky Attack here. I do want to get rid of this Dragonair. Um, and at this point, they do give up their second shield. I'm safely going to give up my shield. Or no, I'm not going to give up my shield. I, I lied. I'm going to finish this game with Annihilate. I'm thinking of a game that you're probably going to see very, very shortly here. Opponent is dumping all of their energy here, which is fine. I'm going to swap into my Annihilate, and I'm going to be able to counter down the rest of this uh, trainer's team. Have a shield for my Annihilate. The opponent has just their Whiskash now on the back. Going to go for the Ice Punch to finish it up. It's a good game. 
Now, these are the last two sets with the team that I played. It, was, it ended up being a seven and three run, but it was good enough because it showcases a lot of different matchups, and I think that that's really important. So for Lickitung, I like to go for seven counters, one short of the Shadow Ball, and then I like to swap into my Lickitung because then if they want to throw the Power Whip, I can catch it on my Lickitung. Uh, interesting uh, thing about the Annihilate matchup with uh, Lickitung is Annihilate does win it unless Lickitung lands a Power Whip. And I believe that's in the ones. If it lands the Power Whip, it can win the ones. <coughs> Pardon me, I'm still getting over my cough. Um, when I lure out a Bastion, this is fine because, again, that's the one thing that Skarmory just does not want to see. Even with Steel Wing, even though the matchup's a little bit better, I still would much rather not have this matchup. It also gives me an opportunity to get my Annihilates a little bit of farm here. And the opponent, if they want to go for a full farm down with my Lickitung, they're going to have to put up a shield at, at least. Well, not in this case, but in some cases it does happen, especially if they let you get ahead on energy now. Uh, Bastidon does not hit very hard, so I can let this go. It's just a flamethrower. It does, you know, a chunk of damage, but I don't want to give up a shield for it. Um, especially because I know that them having that Lickitung, I, the energy that I'm about to get, it's not worth giving up a shield for because the Lickitung still has that power whip loaded and I would rather not force myself into a situation where I have to expend both shields for that, right? So um, I'm going to go ahead and swap into my Skarmory. I too tend to let my Skarmory sweep with shields here. Um, it's very good at doing that unless the, you know, obviously unless the opponent's, you know, stowing a lantern in the back. There's nothing about Lickitung that really says swap in your lantern. So if you get a lantern in the back, which certainly happens, unfortunate. My opponent, for some reason, is not shielding anything. Um, I would like to think that the Azumarill in this matchup was their win condition because Lickitung with two shields is not going to be able to take out um, the Skarmory and the Annihilate here. Now, because the body slams do almost no damage. So, uh, but just, you know, hindsight sort of thing. Uh, the trainer may have had a different plan in the beginning. And maybe in hindsight, maybe they may have realized that, you know, the Azumarill was the better uh, win condition. But that's okay. Um, and in this, and like I said, just because I'm in the 2300s doesn't mean I'm playing against trainers who have no idea what they're doing. Like, there are definitely plenty of really solid trainers down here. Um, they, they, they just, yeah, they just are. It's true. I know quite a few of them personally, but um, so next game and I leap into Dragonair. So what I like to do here is I like to go for an Ice Punch CMP, give up my first shield to my opponent as they give theirs to me. Um, and what this does is it gives Lickitung an edge because Lickitung loses this matchup in even shields, okay? Um, because of the fact that, you know, you, you're... Dragonair and the Lickitung get to the moves at the same exact pacing. Now that I have a huge energy, or not huge, a huge HP advantage, now I can just bring in my Lickitung and I can force them to swap. I, I imagine that there's probably, uh, you know, Bastidon and something else in the back. That's just normal. <coughs> you know, very often I see the Dinairs have like an RPS backline. So the opponent actually has a Skeleturge in the back, which is a little bit scary. Because Lickitung is the only reasonable answer I have to a Skeleturge. And so, um, the thankfully the opponent decides not to uh, go for that uh, shield, but I have to go for a body slam. I'm not getting another power whip, so I'm gonna have to go and just do my best here. I'm hoping that the opponent maybe wants to throw the shadow ball right away, so I'm gonna shield this up, thinking that maybe they're gonna go for shadow ball first. My opponent goes for disarming voice, playing that exactly the way they should. They played that very perfectly, knowing that you know let's bait and then go for the Shadow Ball, knowing that they could throw both back-to-back -back without throwing a single Incinerate. Now I'm out of shields, and my opponent is going to have to come in with their next Pokemon, and I'm not sure what it is yet. So the opponent now comes in with a Lantern. I immediately pivot into my Annihilate, and even though it's Lantern, I they get to a move. It's a Surf. It's not going to quite KO, uh, but my only way to win this here is I get a Bait with an Ice Punch and then land a Shadow Ball, and I... that, that like. In the moment, that was my brain was like, hit Ice Punch. Should have hit Shadow Ball in case they didn't shield, but I quit. I just, I top left because I know I lost. <coughs> All right, getting into the next battle. We got Annihilate on the Lickitung. So once again, going to go for seven counters and make the swap out. My opponent swaps immediately. So here's the deal with Gligar swap -ins. If you see a Gligar come in and you're five counters or less away from the Ice Punch, Go for the Ice Punch, and then swap. You get a free shield, and you come in with Skarmory. If they instantly switch, they get to the Aerialist before you get to your Ice Punch, so it's better to just immediately swap in Skarmory. 
And uh, don't bring in your Lickitung like a bozo, because that's exactly what I did on an accident. So <laughs> me misclicking did cost me a game, so don't make that same mistake. Make sure you bring in Skarmory to the Gligar. Now, I go for an undercharge here because I have every intention of fully farming this down, realizing that my Skarmory has a very positive snowball matchup into Lickitung. If I can get this farm down, it's going to be very difficult for the Lickitung to be able to simply just you know, do anything about this. So my opponent hard swaps out of their Gligar into the Lickitung to avoid getting farmed down. They go for both shields down here. I'm going to go for a shield as well because I'm expecting this to be a power whip. And I bring my Annihilate back in here because I don't really want to deal with a Lickitung here. <laughs> it's pretty miserable. Um, and I can still get a lot of leeway with my Annihilate, but I'm fine with giving up a second shield here if I have to, because Lickitung by itself is basically a shield. Unfortunately, my opponent is able to get to a last second power whip here before I go down, so I am going to shield this up, but <coughs> excuse me. But I realize that their Gligar is super low, and if they come back in with it, I have an Ice Punch ready to go, so I'm going to let the Ice Punch loose just to guarantee that they're not going to be able to get anything off on me. And they have an Azumarill in the back. I get to the Shadow Wall before I go down, just barely, and then my Lickitung gets to come in and clean up with a Power Whip, and that's going to be a good game here. So this team is extremely consistent. You kind of, you know, you want to use it, you know, dance around a bit with it if you need to. Make sure that you're putting your matchups in the right place, making some good calls. Um, I come up with my Skarmory here to force the opponent to throw energy so they can't just dump a Hydro can or a Hydro Pump into me or something like that. Uh, they will be forced to throw because Skarmory does get to its move and it would KO. So they just go for the player off, doesn't do enough damage, going to go for the power up, finish, things, finish this game up, and that is going to be well played to my opponent. <laughs> this cough is the worst. It's terrible. I can't breathe without feeling like I have to cough. Anyway, we get Claude Sire on the next lead here. And this is kind of neutral into most of the team. Skarmory obviously is a really good matchup. Annihilate's able to resist any poison damage, any rock damage from Stone Edge. Um, earthquakes are fairly uncomfortable, so I go for a uh, catch on my Lickitung to get the Earthquake off of uh, off of Annihilate, and they go for a Sludge Bomb bait, which is fine with me. And then they swap in Guzzlord, that old Poison Dark Core. Um, Lickitung doesn't have a very good matchup here because its licks are resisted, which does mean that I have basically no fast move pressure, which you know, obviously unfortunate, but I'm able to get to a second body slam here, which to me tells me my opponent is either at two dragon claws or one away, but they let it go, which now tells me that I can get them into a range where Annihilate or Skarmory can farm down. Now, um, I reckon that my Skarmory is probably going to have a little bit more play here. I want to save it for the, uh, for the Claude Sire. So I do go ahead and just let the crunch go through. Kind of just wanted to know how much it was going to do too. Um, gives me some extra energy in case the opponent comes back in with Claude Sire, but they come up with Jellicent. Now I feel like I'm in a very tough position because Jellicent is not a good matchup for Skarmory. It's not a good matchup for Annihilate, especially with my Annihilate having no HP and or having no energy and low HP. So I expect my opponent here to throw the Shadow Ball, and they don't. So I'm like, okay. And then my opponent doesn't build up to a Shadow Ball. I am counting here. It is just four or three hexes, four hexes. Uh, whatever it would have been to get to that. And then my opponent swaps in the Claude Sire here, maybe trying to get some use out of it, maybe hopefully trying to uh, whittle down my Skarmory here. Um, but I'm going to go for Sky Attack. I know that my Skarmory resists everything but Stone Edge, and if they're going for Stone Edge, then so be it. But my opponent goes for the Earthquake here, and I'm going to look to try and farm this all the way down. If they have Earthquake, they're not going to be able to make it, but this is just a Sludge Bomb as this was just six uh, mud shots, or is it poisons things? That was, uh, I couldn't tell. I think it was poisons things. Um, so I'm going to go for the Brave Bird here, and then immediately swap, and hope that I've got enough HP on my uh, Skarmory to get to a move later. But my opponent goes ahead and lets it go, and then farms me all the way down, and my Skarmory comes back in, gets two Steel Wings in, and they are within range for one Steel Wing, so unless they have back-to-back -back moves, I'm going to be able to win this game because my fast move is quicker than theirs, and we barely take it with one HP. Or close to it, maybe like two or three, I don't know. Trevenant on the lead, terrible lead, got to go into the Lickitung immediately. Skarmory's not an amazing matchup either. Um, and then I see something I haven't seen in months. I haven't seen a wall rain in a long time. And I dig it, but my opponent goes and lets the power up go, and this tells me that I can flip switch and I need to do it. Now, I can take any one move from this wall rain easily, but they're going to go for the earthquake, which does a fair amount of damage. Uh, but what I want to do here is I'm not worried about over farming on energy uh, with Lickitung here. 
because if the Trevenant comes back in for whatever reason, which it does, um, my licks are going to be what matters. So I'd rather keep HP on my Lickitung. Now, had they come in with something else, might have been able to get to a Body Slam before it had taken me out. We'll see. Um, I don't go for the Body Slam here because I didn't think I was going to. I was going to take it. I should have. Would have been a nice, like tiny little fraction of chip damage. Uh, my opponent stays in. Going to go for that Shadow Ball. They don't have to fear the Steel Wing damage very much. Um, the only thing that they truly need to fear here in this matchup is the Sky Attack and Brave Bird, which is super effective damage. Now, my opponent going to shield this one up as well. Um, and I'm going to look for this farm down, but I'm going to have to give up my other shield in order to do it. But because my Steel Wing went through, I've guaranteed the KO on this Trevenant. And my opponent having a shield, but perhaps not having very much... Um, in, in terms of resistance to Sky Attack and Brave Bird is what I'm hoping for. My opponent has a Whisk Cash in the back. I have play here. My opponent shields up the Sky Attack, which is huge. I know that I was going to live any one move. I just wanted to throw the Brave Bird maybe after they threw their move. So my opponent goes for the Scald here, and I get the debuff, which means I'm going to try to get out of this match, but my opponent was closer to a move than I thought. <coughs> and so they get the Mud Bomb off. They take me out. Very good move timing for my opponent. I completely lost track. But unless the opponent is going to be able to do it again, I just need to get to a Shadow Ball for the KO Scald. Going to get another attack drop because apparently it's 100% when it's used against me and 0 to 10% when I use it against someone else. That attack drop almost saves him, but we're able to get the game with a counter down. Getting into the next battle, we've got Annihilate on the lead versus another Dragonair. Very common uh, met, uh, meta here, just seeing Dragonair in a lot of teams. Um... And I can't tell if it's small or if it's just Annihilate being fat. <laughs> Big, angry, fat monkey. Anyway, I'm going to do it the same way I did last time. Just going to go for that Ice Punch, get the uh, first two sh uh, first shield from the opponent myself, and then drop into my Lickitung now that I have an advantage in that matchup and see if the opponent wants to drop in with like a Steel type or something. Opponent is farming up a bunch of energy, and I throw the Body Slam right away, and they swap into a Bastion. And I'm very upset, but it's not... For any other reason other than the fact that I tried to throw that energy right away, expecting it probably does get caught on something. So um, I'm going to go for the power whip here. That's all I'm going to do is just go for as many power whips as I can. Annihilate is more than healthy enough to take a move from this thing. And the opponent, like I said, they do have to throw energy. They can't just fully farm down a Lickitung because I'll get to enough power whips to make him sweat. So they're going to go for the Stone Edge here. I'm going to be very close to being taken out and not getting another power up, unfortunately. But that means that my Annihilate is going to get that much more farm which makes it useful. Now, the problem is, is that the Dragonair has a move, and I can't shield this because of it. Opponent goes for the Flamethrower and then drops in their Dragonair immediately, but somehow we CMP. Um, so that's, you know, well, they swap in, go for a Dragon Breath, and then we swap, and we CMP. So I uh, I get the Ice Punch. I should be able to get the other shield unless they want to let their Dragonair go down, which they don't. But because they just hard swapped, I'm coming in with my, uh, my Skarmory here and farming all the way down. Now, I want you to remember how low that Bastion was when it left. It was in the red, which means that I could farm it down if I want to, or I could go for a Brave Bird. My opponent now, <coughs> thinking of what to do next, and for some reason, they come in with Victory Tower. And so I'm going to go for the Sky Attack here, leaving myself with enough energy to get to a Brave Bird if needed. My Annihilate has enough to get in there. We get the Victory Bell, and you know what? Boom! Get your Bastion on Victory Bell Core the heck up out of here. Man, no way. Brave Bird isn't even enough to KO, but the Steel Wing that comes after is, and that's a good game. <laughs> Getting into the next battle here. Annihilate on the lead versus Skarmory. This is not a terrible lead for Annihilate. It actually does win in even shields, I do believe, but the Shadow, gonna have to be fearful of those moves because they hurt. So, Skarmory, I'm gonna go for the Ice Punch first because I want to be able to get the shield. My opponent and I CMP tied, so I'm gonna have to shield back. And then I'm going to drop into my Lickitung, and I'm going to go for, you know, I'm just going to start building up energy. Opponents a Shadow, so they're not going to be able to absorb as much damage as they used to when they weren't a Shadow. But, as you're going to see, this Brave Bird's going to hurt, dude. I'm going to give it to him. Boom! That Brave Bird from the Shadow Skarmory, it hurts so bad. Lickitung going to be able to get to one Body Slam and go down here. And then Skarmory is going to come in. And I have to figure out what's in the back. I'm not 100% sure, but I would have to guess that it's going to be a Mud Boy because that's the most common thing you see with Skarmory on the lead. So I'm going to over farm here. I'm actually going to look to farm all the way down now that they've thrown energy. I was thinking about whether I should throw or not, but now that they've thrown, I'm just going to go ahead and go for that farm down. And the Skarmory, not doing so hot, getting close to going down 
is um, pretty low, so they're probably going to have to pop in with whatever they have in the back. But I immediately pop in with my uh, Annihilate here and just go for the Shadow Ball. I want to guarantee that shield or huge damage. Because the Skarmory is within range of any one move, I do believe, at this point. KOing, so my opponent going for a charge move here. I'm going to let it go, and I'm going to hope that this is a good, ra good enough range for a Brave Bird to KO. Because uh, <laughs> if it's not, I'm in trouble because my opponent just threw a move. Would this also allows me to get some more farm for free, but here's what we're going to have to just wait and see. How much damage does this Brave Bird do? Is it going to be enough or is it going to leave the... <laughs> Boom! It's enough. Who was worried? Sky Attack coming through on the Shadow Skarmory because it's a shadow. This is going to be enough damage to KO. <coughs> it's going to be a good game. <laughs> oh my god. <coughs> it just comes up out of nowhere sometimes. I hate it. It's awful. Bafagrigus on the lead in this game. Again, just like Trevenant, going to go straight to the Lickitung. My opponent comes up with a Zoomerol, which tells me they don't have a hard Lickitung answer, which also tells me I can flip switch here, which I really need to do because Annihilate really can't farm down a Zoomerol that well. And Skarmory, I would much rather have Skarmory on Bafagrigus than I would have Annihilate. Getting Just taking super effective damage from all the fast moves, it, it would go down very quickly. So i uh, going to go for a Body Slam bait here. <laughs> the day that I can go through a video without coughing my lungs out, it's going to be great. I can't wait. I can absorb any one move here, and I'm going to eat a Hydro Pump, because why not? Um, I'm going to go for another Body Slam here before the opponent's going to be able to get to a charge move, and then Body Slam at this range will become very close, if not enough, to take it out. Opponent comes in with a Sableye. I'm going to go for this Power Whip here to do huge damage to the opponent. Now, I know that Annihilate is not an amazing Sableye counter, but if I had to pick one, I'm bringing it in against the Sableye. Because <coughs> they can't go for returns, so they're going to go for the Foul Play. And they should be six away from their next Foul Play, which tells me that because they threw right away, I can go for the Shadow Ball. Shields down. This is going to hurt. So, going for that Shadow Ball. Boom! Taking out the Sableye, Kofagrigus in the back gets the farm it needs. I come in with my Skarmory, my opponent has no shields, I just have to make sure that they're not going to be able to catch on that Azumarill. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to shield once, and I'm going to over farm here a little bit until I expect- I, I just- I was waiting for it. I knew they were going to go for it. Going straight for the Brave Bird, and at this point I'm hoping it's enough, because Kofagrigus is kind of bulky. And it is, and we get the win. Boom! <coughs> So all in all, as you know, Home Slice Henry's all in all, right? So basically, this team very strong, picking up a 4-1 to get out of the 2300 Elo range into the mid 2400s with this team. It's a very strong team. I think that it's one of it has to be one of Annihilate's best teams because it just it's so consistent and so strong. I had mostly actually I don't even think I had a single negative set with this team. Once I picked it up, it was all positive. Three two three two three two four one. And I was able to make some good ELO traction with it. And I know that you can as well. Let me know in the comments if you have a good Annihilate team you've come up with for this rotation or in general for this season. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.